Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at Final Flight Outfitters, the family-owned outdoor store that has all the apparel and outdoor equipment you need for your next hunting or fishing trip. Visit finalflight.net for more information. Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast. This is Scott Williams. We record here every single week in our beautiful West Tennessee home. Our podcast, just like our museum and heritage park, is dedicated to celebrating our unique Southern culture, our spirit, and our accomplishments. I've got some very fantastic guests for you here today. Mark Latterman from Sammy's and The Grind, and he's brought Alan, his son, and we're going to talk a little bit about how they got into the restaurant business and how some of that incredible food gets prepared for those of us who live in this community. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us. So um, so are you from around here? I've been living in West Tennessee since I was 17, so uh, my family moved here at that time, and I, I told my parents my mom in particular, that as soon as I turn 18, I'm going to move back to Arizona. That's where I was originally from. And uh, by the time I turned 18, I fell in love with West Tennessee. I met my wife and fell in love with West Tennessee. And I realized this is where I want to be. And so do you get back to Arizona much to visit at all? I've been back once since that time. So that's, you know, what is that, 40 years. Yeah. So I don't miss it as much as I thought I would. Yeah. What what do you like about it? I I just love the laid back folk. Um, You know, people people outside of this area think that Tennessee's a little backwards. Maybe they do. I I can't say that they do. But the reality is Tennesseans are the way they are because they want to be this way. They don't want to be in a rush. And, 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 like and that. you, you uh, obviously were in a rural, somewhat rural community. There certainly are more rural than, than this. But, you know, does that, does that appeal to you as well versus being like in a metropolitan area like Memphis or Nashville? It or? does. Obviously, there's some big advantages, especially for folks like us that just love food. I'm a, I'm a little slower paced kind of guy, and I just I, I like knowing everybody's name. I like in my town. I like you know dealing with people on a personal basis. If I walk into a store or into Discovery Park, I'm gonna know most of the people here. And so and so we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about food today, since that's you know sort of the theme of this episode. Um, what uh, how, what what was your first foray into the uh, food business? Was it the restaurant, or did you have? Were you working in the food business before? Well, when I was when I was sixteen, I got a job at Pizza Hut out in Arizona, and uh, when we moved to Tennessee, I reconnected with the Pizza Huts here and got a job there, and and did that for oh well, I, I don't know the exact amount of time, but it was around twenty three years. Became a manager and did that, you know, for for most of that twenty three years. I would love to say that I, it was just a love for the food business, but it was more, that's what I knew how to do. And as I grew older, I discovered that myself and my family were all really good at hospitality. And so what's, what's interesting is, so you really learned the hospitality business, the finances, the bookkeeping, how to order food. You learned all of that, you know, on the job. Yeah. Um, like I said, between all of us, we have quite a bit of food experience. And so, you know, those, those first 20 years that I was in, in, with Pizza Hut, uh, learned quite a bit and uh, connected with some folks here in Union City. And we became kind of, kind of became partners in a snappy tomato pizza, you know, worked with those folks for a few years. And that's when I really fell in love with the food business. What's, the, what's the benefit of uh, working uh, run? I don't know that much about the restaurant business. What's the biggest benefit between being your own your own individual restaurant versus being part of a chain? Well, um, when I was involved with uh, chains, as, as we call them, I noticed that if there was something I could improve, I wasn't allowed to. And so, you know, once I got uninvolved with a chain restaurant, I decided, you know what, if I'm ever going to be involved in a franchise, I'm going to be the one doing the franchising. Because if I have a better idea, I want to be able to implement it. And uh, that's that's really what propelled us forward with what we're doing now. And so you've been work so so you you've been you were working um, in the pizza business and and all along in the back of your mind were you cooking up the idea of a sandwich shop? I'm assuming, and I shouldn't assume, but did Sammy's come first between the grind and Sammy's? Yes. So 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 you were thinking of a sandwich shop, 
And, you know, of course, I eat, I eat there all the time, so I know what it is now. How was it when it first launched? Well, uh, my wife and I were both restaurant managers for other companies, and um, we realized that we were using, you know, first of all, we realized that we that, that we had a talent for it, that uh, for hospitality in general, not just food, but, you know, there's, there's a big hospitality factor in t- into succeeding in a restaurant, uh, the way that you treat people when they come to your place. And so um, I kind of started feeling like we were making other people wealthy off of our talents. And so there had always been a desire to own our own business. Now, where did you meet her? I actually met her working in a restaurant in Martin, Tennessee, a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) Kappa Steakhouse, if anyone can remember that. (laughs) Okay. So So, so you guys were making other people wealthy. That's how we felt anyway. And I'm sure at home you were bouncing around the idea of what if. Yep, absolutely. Um, We were looking for opportunities, uh, and the opportunity came up to uh, rent the space that we're in in Martin, Tennessee, and uh, we actually rented it before we had a concept. So we went and leased it, and uh, then we set about trying to determine what we were going to do. And the original concept was way different than Sammy's. So it evolved. Alan, our son, Alan Latterman over here, he helped us evolve it into the right direction. Now, now what, Alan, what's, what was your background? Were you, did you grow up in the restaurant business working with your folks? Uh, I grew up basically... Um, I was going to college in, in, uh, Memphis and I really didn't have a uh, direction that I was really interested in going in. I started kind of wanting to go to culinary school. Uh, but my parents had always been in the fast food business, uh, always managing. So I was at home a lot by myself, you know, during those like 14 to, to, uh, 17, uh, cooking a lot for myself cause they're always at work. When back to what your original question about Sammy's, uh, when that whole concept first started, it was nothing about a sandwich restaurant. It really wasn't. And we just kind of went over the process of what does Martin not have? And it's a, a sandwich shop. We had, we had you know, a, a chain sandwich shop, but we didn't have something that was, you know, Martin's. It didn't have its own identity. I and it's like. a university town. Yeah. So that's one thing college students eat a lot of are sandwiches. Right. I think we all do. And so the so the Martin one came first. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So you so you guys started putting this putting this idea together and um how where did the name come from? Well, we we were brainstorming around different types of names and we wanted something that said sandwich. So, um, you know, you probably heard Rachel Ray say the word Sammy. A sa- you know, a Sammy. Uh-huh. I'm putting together a Sammy. And so uh, that was kind of popular with us at that time. And it just occurred to us, call it Sammy's. That's what sandwiches are. There is some uh, science behind that, too. We, we actually did a lot of research behind a lot of the big chains. And, you know, if you look around, a lot of them have that E sound, Hardee's, Wendy's, Arby's. Yeah, that's they true. They all do. A lot yeah. of them. Mickey D's. Even yeah. people do that with Mickey D's. Yeah. And so we were actually looking for that. And we we went to a lot of different options. Like we had Toasties and all these different, I can't think of them all, but we had a whole bunch of ideas. And then we eventually both agreed on Sammy's. And we really liked the way that sounded. And we knew that some people would be conflicted about who is Sammy, you know, but we, we, we just liked that whole idea that it was slang for sandwiches. Well, so, so let me preface by saying that, you know, as a person who's only been here in the last year, when I was planning to come here, the thing, you know, among the things everybody told me you had to do was eat at Sammy's, first of all. So, so I started off knowing it was a place that everybody recommended, and then people said, oh, and you've also got to go to the grind, which we're going to talk about that too in a minute. Um, of course, I didn't know know that they weren't related. I mean, I didn't know that they were related. And anyway, so when I went to Sammy's, I was very fascinated being in the hospitality business myself on a different side. I'm always curious, you know, is this a chain? Is it, you know, and it, um, as soon as you walk in, like there's a lot of wit, uh, you know, so you, you guys used a lot of witticism and you used a lot of design, heavy graphic design. And so I'm curious, did that come from you guys? Did you have an ad agency? Did you have a designer? Where did all that come from? That was all, uh, most of it was me. Uh, um, I'm pretty proud of it too um, because I spent a lot of time on that. I yeah. wanted to be, I wanted to have this feeling that you're in a chain, but also 
Um, I loved all the witty ideas. I, I wanted it to be fun and unique. And like, I wanted you to go in and look around on the walls and like always have something to read, you know, and kind of laugh and chuckle to yourself or talk with your buddy or whoever you're with, um, about, you know, that's kind of funny, you know, uh, ha, ha, that's how we roll and we're rolling, you know, raps in there and, and stuff like that. So yeah, well, it's really, really professional. Well, I thank mean, you. The, 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 and then not only is the look and the feel of it professional, my daughter who goes to college in Memphis, she comes home all the time. And the first thing she does on her way, is she stops at Sammy's like that's her. She, and she'll text me sometimes. She'll say, I wish that I was living closer to you guys so I could go to Sammy's tonight. And so, you know, so that's pretty good praise from a college student yeah. that's, well, that's in Memphis who's around all that food that she could eat. When we hear stories but like that, we're always just amazed. Uh, it, it, it seems far-fetched that people would love to come to a restaurant that we run, honestly. We're humbled by that. Yeah, well, when you go in, I mean, when you go in like on a Sunday after church, I mean, the place is packed. You know, the Sammy's over here. We go there oftentimes for lunch. And um, it's a great concept. You have a lot of, you have a huge menu. Um, now, I dare say the other thing, because I started working here about this, about, you know, fall, um, uh, November, you know, and around Discovery Park, November is really popular at Sammy's because of the turkey and dressing sandwich. And that's not something I'd ever even heard of before. Well, that stemmed from Thanksgiving dinner. So after Thanksgiving, you have all those leftovers. We would always take the leftover rolls and put pile all that stuff onto a, a roll and, and eat it. And so when we were determining that we were going to open Sammy's originally, it, w- it was in the fall. We opened in October. We already knew that we were going to be doing that at home, and the idea occurred to us to serve that sandwich. We Initially, we were going to put it on the menu and serve it year-round, but we realized how much how difficult it was going to be to make that dressing from scratch every single day, and we make hundreds of pounds of it every single day. Because we, we have people, it. we have people who listen from all over the world to this to this uh, podcast, and so when you say uh, turkey and dressing to some people, like they don't really know the difference between stuffing and dressing. And so, what you guys are using is actually southern um, dressing. Sure. So, why don't you throw out just real quick how, what what's the difference? Well. I'm not really big on stuffing. Obviously, stuffing comes inside the bird. Dressing is around the bird. So there's the big name difference. But um, stuffing is made with a kind of a white white bread, and uh, dressing is made with cornbread. And, of course, ours has the the uh, southern-style biscuits in it, too. We make, we make that cornbread and biscuits every day. And then after they're done, we make— you know, we turn that into the dressing, which has a bunch of spices. Alan's the the keeper of the recipe, so I'll let him speak to it a little more. I can't make it. He can. Uh, it's my grandmother's recipe. It's really um, her mom's recipe, which oh, wow. I, I didn't know her very well uh, just when I was a really little kid. But we'll, we'll credit it to my grandmother. And I, I wish she was here to know how much it impacted. Uh, oh, yeah. Like how much her dressing has... Did she, did she joy. write it down like on a little index card or no, do you have what, it in her basically handwriting? Basically what happened is uh, a couple of years before she passed, she just got too old to make it. And so she passed the recipe down to me and I started making it. And then for the, the restaurant, we tweaked it just slightly so it can be done in a restaurant because right. we can't make our own stock uh, out of you know chicken. But uh, we So we had to slightly change it. But uh, other than that, I mean, we're making the exact recipe. Yeah, that's and amazing. And uh, what's the what's the what is your favorite uh, thing on the Sammy's? I mean, you guys are around it all the time, so you probably like, you know, get sick of it by the time you. No, are, I, you I still, still have, love you know, Sammy's. I okay. don't know what it is. I love a good sandwich. What What is your favorite thing on the menu? The Italian. This is a classic Italian. It's my favorite sandwich. If you see me in there eating lunch, I'm probably eating one of those. <laughs> Same here. You <laughs> stole my thunder there because that's what I was going to say. Is the Italian? Okay, well, the Italian I, I, is a fantastic sandwich. My wife likes that one, so I'll have to tell her she's got good taste. The Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz is killer. The Mufaletta I love, too. Uh, you know, I love a, all the sandwiches, but if I'm in there and, you know, uh, like every now and then I'll get something different, but a lot of times just the Italian. See, I love it. That was one of the key things when we were open, and Alan and I sat down and we decided that we were going to make all these different sandwiches, if it, and if anything was just good, we were going to throw it out. Uh, and it had to be really 
amazing before we were going to put it on the menu. That probably sounds a little egotistical. I don't mean it to sound that way, but that's the way we looked at it. We wanted every bite to blow people away, and if it was just like, wow, that's a good sandwich, we were like, nope, it's not going on the menu. And then um, what is the one, um, you know, against the wall, you have pictures of people who ate all of one. Which one is that? That is the lock, stock, and barrel challenge. And... um, we decided, I think when Sammy's first came out, that, that show uh, was big on TV, Man vs. Food. And he was going around and he was going doing all these challenges all over America. And we were like, man, that would be so super cool if we could do that. And then we just kind of, we're, we're, we just got fell in love with the idea and we made a, a sandwich that weighs over two and a half pounds that was <laughs> essentially, you know, three of our big giant dag, dag sandwiches stacked on top of each other. And uh, went from there. We and how many people have actually, a lot of people have actually done it? or is We've it... had a lot. I can't tell you the exact number of yeah. challenges, but yeah. we've had hundreds. Yeah. And probably somewhere around, uh, I would say, between the two restaurants, 25 finish maybe. Wow. Yeah, maybe a little less than It that. might be 20. Maybe 20. Yeah. And then you've got, um, for the dessert, you've got a tribute to Elvis. So you've got the peanut butter banana. Yeah. Um, I know some people probably get that. And then sometimes you have soup. I like the soup. So we I always, love the I, soup. I always get the soup. We um, the, the, the soup was actually Mark's recipe, the potato soup. That's all sure. him. Sure. Uh, I, I don't really care for soups that are canned or frozen. So when we decided we were going to put soup on our menu, we said we have to do it from scratch. In the original days, the only thing we had in there to cook with was an oven. And so believe it or not, we had to figure out a way to cook homemade from scratch, not just homemade, but from scratch, potato soup in an oven, which we no longer do that. We have more equipment now. So now we, we can actually cook it on a stove top. But, but um, yeah, I mean, we just love making things fresh. We love, you know... We're into flavor, so I mean that's that's our gimmick. We said that from the get go that our gimmick was going to be great tasting food, and so you know the other guys got the cheap wrapped up. We can't compete with that, but we can make things taste better, and that's that's just where we're at now. Now, so Sammy's was rocking and rolling. You had did you have both going before you started thinking about the grind? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. both both restaurants were going. Now, a lot of people would have just stopped and said, okay, we've done it. Let's just, now let's keep going and then let's go fishing. But you guys didn't, you you know, what, what motivated you to decide, you know what, we need to go take this to the next level? Well, first of all, we're probably not as smart as those other people. We, <laughs> <laughs> they would have stopped. We wanted more punishment. Uh, but, the, but no, we actually, we get a lot of joy out of, out of bringing other people joy. And that's how we look at it, you know, and that's the reward of the food business. Alan and I... You know, we love sandwiches for sure. We couldn't have done Sammy's. But the reality is the grind is more my style of eating. And I don't want to speak for Alan, but I I think it's more his style of eating. And we wanted to create a restaurant that was more our style. And uh, not that Sammy's isn't. Sammy's was more of a lunch, more of the type of place where I would go eat lunch every single day. And I do most weeks. Um, but we wanted a place that you could hang out in and, you know, like the grind that was as I said, that was more our style. And so we just started brainstorming on it. And we actually talked about it. And during the process of talking about it, we were brainstorming about it. And we did that for probably five years before we ever really got it going. And, and so I ate there this past weekend as well. I, just coincidentally, I promise I'm not I'm not stalking you, you know, from a food perspective. But um, so you have uh, the the menu is uh, appeals to somebody who's looking for comfort food for sure. I know I had the um, macaroni and cheese balls that have like Doritos, yeah, scrumpled Cheetos, dust. Cheetos dust, hot Cheetos dust. Yeah, those yeah. were incredible. Thank you. Um, there's also a turkey dressing sandwich there that that the uh, somebody gobbler, uh, we call it the gobbler, yep. and it's got the it's got the dressing from Sammy's, so the Sammy's girls are actually making that dressing, oh, and bringing it over yeah. to the grind, so they, they do the same kind of deal. And then uh, you have like nine or ten, I don't know how many burgers you have, but you have a big selection of burgers that all look incredible. What what is, what is the most frequently ordered item of food? We're going to talk about dessert in a minute, but for food, what is the most frequently ordered item? Uh, I would say probably, you know, the Star Spangle Burger is, you know, it's a classic bacon cheeseburger. I would say that's probably the number one. 
Um, after that, you get something like the Farmer's Daughter mm-hmm. or the Gambler. You know that the has McLovin is the very, McLovin is a very popular one. That's right yeah. too, which has got the fried Mac ball on the burger. And then you're some of them are named after movies. Isn't yeah, that there's right? a lot yeah. of a lot of the stuff in that restaurant is themed after stuff that I love and grew up liking. You know, uh, the '80s and '90s. Late 80s, early 90s stuff, and then movies I grew up watching. Obviously, McLovin's from the movie Super Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the stuff like the Cowabunga pizza rolls is a little nod to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was my whole life, you know, in 1991. Something like that. <laughs> so so uh, lots to eat, but then the, the grind is also, when people talk about the grind and they say, oh, you should go eat at the grind, and then they always follow that up with, they have incredible uh, milkshakes. And so what? What? Um, tell me a little bit about the, the how that came about and what makes it different from other milkshakes. Well, we, at the grind, we kind of have this whole over-the-top everything going on. We want to do over-the-top hospitality and over-the-top food. And we extend that to our desserts, over-the-top milkshakes. Um, Mark and I were working on these shakes a lot, trying to figure out how to make them different. You know, we we saw we wanted a tall shake that was in your face the whole time you're eating it. Yeah, it comes all the way up out of the glass. <laughs> That's even. right. Yeah, and we wanted it to be in your face. You know, and we wanted it to kind of make you like when you're a kid. Because, uh, you know, I, I base a lot of things off of stuff when I was a kid. When you're a kid, any milkshake is giant, okay? Just about any milkshake anyways. So I wanted this to appeal to adults too. It's like, oh, my gosh, I feel like a kid because the shake is so massive. So that was one of the ideas about making this shake way over the top, way in your face with all this stuff, you know. And um, that's, I mean, that's the main thing that keeps our shakes a difference. You know, you get this masterpiece, as I'm going to call it, this artful-looking thing that, you know, because you eat with your eyes first, you know. You first get that thing that comes through the dining room, and you're like, what is that, you know? But you got to order it first, and you're <laughs> seduced into ordering it by the descriptions on the menu. Right, you're right. Did you write all the copy? and? Yeah, there and- was uh, – I had some help from some other people that helped do that. I wrote a lot of that stuff. Um, uh, we have a, a buddy of mine that works for us named uh, Grant. He helped me do a lot of that cool writing, too. And, of course, Mark helped also. He threw in his um, two cents, which are usually worth a lo- more than two cents. So, so. now, when did, when did um, The Grind open? It opened uh, 2017, okay. October 16th. And did it take off immediately? Yes. It was the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> it, was, it was totally unexpected. We knew that we had the potential with these over-the-top you know, creations that we did. We had the potential to be successful. We had no idea that it would take off like it did. No idea. So the first day you were packed? Uh, yes, we were We were packed before the first day. <laughs> People were coming in <laughs> wanting to eat there, and we were telling them we were closed, but we were practicing anyway, so what the heck? Yeah. So we kind of, we officially, we started taking money in on October 16th. We started producing food probably five days before that in a massive way, so... But, I mean, it it was great. I know people come from far, far away, right, just to eat at the grind. I mean, it's it's been in a lot of magazines, and it's been written up in newspaper articles. And We are constantly blown away with how far people come to eat at the grind. It's no exaggeration. We've had families that drove all the way to the grind in Martin, Tennessee, from Louisville, Kentucky, ate a meal. First of all, they waited a couple hours to get in after they drove that far, and then they turned around and drove back to Louisville and then commented on our page, and on our Facebook page, and said that it was worth it. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if it's worth all that, but they seem to think it was, and I, I'm super proud of that fact. Yeah, and, and I think what's interesting is so you guys have an incredible one-of-a-kind thing going there, and here with Sammy's, we have obviously Discovery Park of America. So this Which whole, is an amazing park. Thank yes. you. Appreciate yes. that. And I think really this whole area is really starting to see an increase in, in tourists and people. You know, we have the new hotels opening right next door, so I think that's just going to increase business. Absolutely. I mean, Discovery Park put West Tennessee on the map as far as I'm concerned. Without inspiration from that, we wouldn't have done what we did. Yeah. So, you know, you guys made us believe that we can draw people to West Tennessee. And by we, I mean all of us. Yeah, that's great to hear, you know, with the with Real Foot Lake right there. And yeah, you, got every, you know, the, the vineyards and, you know, this whole area really does have a lot to offer. For If someone's willing to drive all the way just to have one meal, then they'll spend the night and come visit Discovery oh, Park. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I hear that every day. We were down here to 
go to Discovery Park and we thought we'd come over here to this. So um, and there's no doubt that there is some symmetry going on between a lot of these destinations that we have in West Tennessee. Certainly you guys are the biggest yeah. and most obvious draw. Um, but there's no doubt that you guys benefit us, and hopefully we can share some of that back your way. Absolutely, absolutely. So what is next? Are you going to go fishing? You going to just <laughs> you going to retire and go fishing, or you got something else up your sleeve? We, we're there are plans being talked about. Okay. So I mean, I would like to see our the grind seems to be a really successful operation. And by success, I'm not just talking about financially. There's a lot of reward that we get just from making people happy. There's nothing more more important to us than when we see people smiling, you know, leaving our places. Um, and so, you know, I, I wouldn't mind putting another one of these somewhere in a in a destination city like, I don't know, Orlando, Florida, near Disney, yeah. or possibly in Gatlinburg. Yeah. I think that this is the type of restaurant that could go well there. So. Oh, absolutely. But we don't have any solid yeah. plans or anything, so I, I don't want to see one. Anything. I could see one going right next door to Discovery Park of America <laughs> with the hotels right there. I, Honestly, I, we've talked about that and kicked ourselves several times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, it, uh, who knows? Yeah, that's right. It, it As we all continue to grow, especially with I-69 mm-hmm. coming through here, I think that's going to be a real draw as well. Sure, so absolutely. They wouldn't have as far to go if they made the dressing at Sammy's. They could just bring <laughs> it here and they could bring it right around the corner and katie wouldn't have to go all the way over to sammy's she could just <laughs> po- walk right over there so um what else i mean you're a young guy you, have you have you tried to be on any of those reality shows where people are chefs i think you'd be great on that he always tries to get me to go on those shows yeah i think you should he always tries to get me to go on master chef and yeah. I, i'm like i don't i just i don't want to be on tv i don't i right. don't well, have that desire not in that kind of way right, well you got the look you got the yeah, cool you got the cool that. groovy chef look going right. on i think i think that um you'd be a hit on some of those shows yeah i, I just don't know like I, 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 I i've thought about it but it's you know i don't want to do something i don't want to do yeah you know that's a good I mean? that's a good way to live your life you know? <laughs> i don't want to do <laughs> something i don't want to do good way to end up happy you know so i, I think i could get on there with some success for yeah. sure yeah, um, think about the promotion. Yeah, no, I, I thought about it. That's the main reason why yeah, I thought exactly, about it. Uh, exactly, exactly. I'd love to drink a beer with Gordon Ramsay. That's for sure. <laughs> there you go. See, <laughs> there you go. Well, that that's on your bucket list. There it is. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. This is a whole thank lot of fun. And now let's go find out a little bit more behind the scenes at Discovery Park of America. All right. Thank you, Scott. I am Andrew Gibson with the Education Department here at beautiful Discovery Park of America. And today I am with Russell Orr, an education specialist here, who will be sharing a story about spacesuits, right? That's right. All right. So, Russell, take it away. Well, the, the first thing, the, the thing about spacesuits is there's more than one kind, and they have different properties depending upon what they're supposed to do. You know, some spacesuits are designed to facilitate certain tasks and not others. So one of the problems in in uh, describing exactly sp- what a spacesuit is is that depending on what it's built to do, it might appear differently, work differently, weigh a different amount, you know, on Earth at least, right? In microgravity, most things weigh almost nothing. So give me some examples. Of what? Spacesuits or weights in microgravity? Because those uh, would all be the same. Spacesuits. So uh, spacesuits combine the best parts of firefighter outfits as well as bulletproof vests. Uh, The reason why you would need the firefighter outfit part is that if you're standing here on Earth and you're in sunlight, the part of you that's facing the sun is almost the same temperature as the part that's in the shade. You know, well, in space, it's totally different. Uh, you, it might be hundreds of degrees if you're facing the sun and there's sunlight shining on you in outer space. However, the part of you that's in the shade, uh, the, the, the average temperature in space is negative 454 degrees. Now, it's closer, it, closer to the sun. It gets warmer. But you have to have some device to handle that intense difference in temperature and not fail. And spacesuits can do that. What are spacesuits made from? Well, spacesuits are made from layer after layer after layer of different materials, all right? The inner layers provide comfort and cooling to the astronauts. Uh, you know, you, you hear space is cold, right? Space is so cold, it's very cold. I mean, we, we just talked about it. But if you were in a spacesuit, you would actually need to cool before you needed to heat up. 
Uh, that's because humans, as you're aware, are warm-blooded creatures. So without an environment to dump the excess heat into, we'd overheat very quickly. So spacesuits circulate cold water around the astronaut's body in a series of tubes to cool them off. And in, like on your extremities, for example, on the fingertips of uh, certain types of spacesuits, you have individual heaters to keep your fingers warm. So they have heating and cooling in them. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, who designed the first spacesuit? Do you know that? Well, believe it or not, the uh, the folks uh, who do make spacesuits were actually so nice as to send us one. The when I, I I'll be honest with you, I was looking on the internet for all of these questions, and I was like, "How much does a spacesuit weigh? All these seem to be different." What's a spacesuit made from? These seem to be different answers. Why is this happening? And uh, we, we, I, I, our NASA contact pointed me toward the ILC Dover company, and they were so kind as to answer my questions. And it was really a relief to find out that, yes, the reason why there are different answers is that not every spacesuit is the same. If you're type, talking about one type of spacesuit versus another one, the weight might be different, the construction might be different, the appearance might be different as well. There is one other thing that you should know. Okay. Because uh, particles of dust and debris move so quickly in outer space on the order of five miles a second and sometimes much faster than that, the very, very outer layer isn't just made out of Nomex, which it, it would be in firefighter suits. It's also made out of Kevlar, which would go into bulletproof vests. This way, if a little bit of micrometeoroid, the speck of dust, hits you, you will live and be able to come back home. Well, all right, Russell. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I know I learned something new today. I hope all of our listeners did as well. Uh, you can learn more about space and spacesuits with Russell here at Discovery Park of America. Once again, thank you all for listening to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast. And we hope to see you here at Discovery Park of America real soon. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.